Hi, this is the uh, Bible Ranger. I'm here to talk to you about the coronavirus or the COVID-19. And what should Christians be doing? Well, this brings us up to opportunity. And opportunity, this is a crisis and it brings out the best and the worst in some people. Some people will actually fight to get on some of the lines or they're hoarding. Some musicians will actually give out free concerts on their, on their internet. For Christians, this is an opportunity to show Christ in us and through us. Now, we have an example of way back in the first century or second century, there was a historian called Dionysius of Rome. And he said that there was a plague there that it killed between a quarter and a third of the population in ancient Rome. And the people that could leave because they had money, they left the city. But those who could not leave, they did the best they could. These were pagans, by the way. And when people got sick, they would kick them out into the streets and nobody was there to take care of them because they were concerned more about survival. So the Christians, thinking different of death, because we, even though nobody wants to die before it's time, they were thinking of death like, well, I'm doing what I'm supposed to do, doing the will of the Lord. And if I die, I'm going to be with the Lord. So they nursed the people that were sick. And they were able to recover like two thirds of the people they actually nursed, which is incredible. And you left, they left a good impression, by the way, of, of like, man, those Christians, they were here to help us out, you know, when nobody else would help out. And Christianity experienced a big boom, by the way. So we should take that and, and think for ourselves, like, Lord, how can I help in these times? You know, think about it, pray about it, and see how you can make a difference. Sometimes the only way you're going to make a difference is through the Internet like I'm doing right now. Now, the other, the other thing is don't panic. It's easy to think like that because, you know, panicking is nobody wants to get sick or, or it's just something that the media keeps pushing on us. But do the things that you have to do and you can do. Like, you know, wash your hands for 20 seconds, take precautions, um, keep our bodies healthy with some zinc, some vitamin D3, some vitamin C, sun, as experts say, and we'll talk about that when we get to a health section later on, okay? Now, at worst, the survival rate of this is 96% survivability. Now, there are other reports that it, some of them say it's 99% survivability. You got to see other independent meteors, and this is some of the stories that are going around on it, okay? Some of it is that if you've had big... Um, vaccinations or the flu and you actually take this test that they give you to see if you have corona you test positive anyway maybe it's because they're the same so this there's actually news clippings that people that have shown to be positive for the for COVID-19 that have died in gunshots and car accidents and heart attacks and strokes or just for the flu common flu they're still being tallied down as COVID-19 deaths so we're not getting the whole truth out there. Now, there's verses in the Bible like John 25, 26, where Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even if he dies. That's an incredible verse. That gives, us, that gives us a lot of hope. Now, in 1 Corinthians 15, 55 through verse 57, Paul is kind of mocking death. And he actually says, you know, where is your sting, death? And it says, grave, where, well, I said it kind of backwards, where is your victory, death, and grave, where is your sting? Now, these are the verses that talk about right after the actual description of the rapture, which when we talk about end times one day, I'll, I'll give you a whole detail on that. So we have nothing to fear. We have, we have hope at the end, by the way. Now, number three. Is this a warning from God? Yes, yeah, true that God has used plagues in the past, and no rain and floods, and he has used these things in the past. That is true. But this particular virus right now, there's, there were reports from Indian scientists that this was made in a lab. And of course, the, um, the media, the fake news out there put out that no, they were wrong, the scientists didn't know what they were talking about. So recently, in the last couple of weeks, there was a French scientist. His name is, um, I'm trying to get his name out here. 
um, Professor Monta, Montagnier, and he's actually, wow, he's really impressive. French Nobel Peace Prize winner. He was the discoverer, not the creator, discoverer of the HIV virus. And he says that these markers that were in this virus here could only be made in a lab. So basically, it's a type of SARS that has a HIV delivery system. It's, it's what they call gain of function. You know, gain of function is like a manipulation. It was something bad made worse or has been something called weaponized. Now, the positive side is that it, people in, in times like this start thinking of their mortality, you know, of their life. They start thinking more about God, the Bible. And this is an opportunity for us that we can actually put out there, you know, the word of God and show show people what Christ would want us to do. Now, there was a time where, like in Genesis 1820, where Simon and Gomorrah, where the people sinned so much that they were blatant about it in your face, kind of like gay parades or, or these shows that are just meaningless. I mean, every show has to have meaningless relationships. There's a, there's a, a, a homosexuality um, character in every show. It's like you can't see a show just for a good story. It's just totally manipulated. It's really aggravating. So even though, even though we've been having volcanoes and eruptions and earthquakes and locusts, it sounds like end times, but I think we still have a little bit of time. Now, if you go to the verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 13 to 14, this is a very familiar verse. You hear this in verse 14. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I will hear them from heaven and forgive their sins and I will heal their land. But check out the verse 13. And that's incredible. But verse 13 says this. If I shut up heaven, that there be no rain. So God can do that, right? And obviously when there's no rain, you can have fires, which is what's going on in Australia. Um, or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Remember the locusts? By the way, if you don't know this, there was billions and billions of locusts. It was something like 24 miles by 36 miles in length which is about three times the size of New York City. And, um, and he's even put out there pestilences in the past. Now, specifically for coronavirus, there's markers that is man-made, so I don't think this was God, but he can use it for his purpose too. So I think we should all go to the Lord and say, Lord, I could be a better, a better Christian. I could be a better follower, Lord Father. Lord, help me to grow your kingdom. We can all use that prayer. I'm trying to do my part here in this inter in this lesson all right the next one is the economy in this economy here the elite use crisis to control to gain control they have a saying that don't let a don't let a good crisis go to waste they actually said this 90% of the media that we hear in the, in the United States is controlled by six companies and we can talk about that in the future now, the longer this economy is shut down, we're considered first world, and we give to a lot of countries out there, um, like we give to a girl in Africa. And, and if we had no job and we had no money for ourselves, we couldn't give to thir third world countries. So whatever happens in this first world here gets multiplied by third world countries, and people will die by the, by the millions because just from salvation alone. So this... Keeping his economy down is just a good way for them to maintain control. Now, we are going to get government checks. All right, cash them, spend them. Just don't depend on them. Don't count on them. I mean, we're supposed to work and we're supposed to, we're supposed to eat from, what we, from our labors of working, okay? So let's just not get into this rut where we're depending on these checks. Research out there from independent sources, this, even Fox is weak, CNN, MS. Um, all these companies, they're just weak. They're fake news. They don't give you the true story, okay? They're, they're controlled by the elite, like I'm saying. Now, eventually, when the Antichrist comes over, okay, he is one person. 
but he needs a system to put him into power. Okay, he's just one man empowered by Satan. But if nobody's listening, he can't control the world. So, so eventually there'll be enough crises and, and, and pestilences and things to, and, and one world order type control where the money's being controlled, where he can actually run everything. So eventually this will happen, but I don't think this is the time yet. Now, what can we do as Christians? This is things to actually make you feel a little bit more comfortable. Like I said, I believe we have time. Don't fear. We win at the end, no matter what happens, okay? Be strong in the word. Pray up. Stay healthy. Become debt-free. And we will talk about all that, okay? Every in detail. Develop useful skills. Gardening. Fixing stuff. Can your foods. Don't hoard share. I mean, we're just not there just for ourselves. You never know. God might make a miracle. Might stretch out your food. You never know. It's possible. Can you do it? Absolutely. Does he have to do it? No. I right, stand up for your rights. Spread the word and teach others. I'll do my part. You do yours. And together, we'll get through this. Now, future topics are going to be like this. A complete end times teaching. I'm talking about chapter by chapter revelation, even verse by verse. We're going to talk about the Olivet Discourse, which is the the end times when Jesus himself is speaking in the Gospels. And we'll hit Daniel. We'll hit all these Old Testament prophetic verses too. It'll be extensive. And believe me, you're going to know more than most Christians. Because most churches don't even talk about this. We'll be talking about the New World Order. We'll be talking about the armor of God. We'll be talking how to study the Bible. We'll be talking about health and finances. We'll be talking about creation versus evolution. We talk about pre-trib and post-trib. And we'll be talking about giants and UFO. There's actually a spot for them in this stuff and you'll see how they actually fit. Like the world's going crazy now. I mean, it's like, it's like everything is a UFO, but there's actually things that we can talk about this. Now, there's a lot more going on. Um, I think the way it's supposed to go, if you, if you subscribe, you get notifications when the next one is, and I'll, I'll work on them as soon as I can and try to give you some quality work. And I guess thumbs up if that's possible. Thank you very much for listening.